Hey guys, we are on location filming today in Texas. We are visiting Firebird Targets, as you can see behind me, and we are gonna tell you all about these things. It's actually a very interesting process that they use to make these, and we have exclusive access to show you behind the scenes of how these Firebirds are made. Let's go check it out. All right. Gotcha. Sorry guys, we can't actually show you how Firebird targets are made, but trust me when I say this is a very cool place and there's some awesome stuff going on here. But what we are gonna do today is talk a little bit about Firebird targets, what they've got, uh, and a new target, their M50. We're gonna shoot a ton of them. Stay tuned, we're gonna have a great time. Let's go shoot. Hey Tyler, what'd you think of that manufacturing process? You know, Dan, I gotta tell you, very interesting. I only wish they could have seen it too, but I totally understand why they can't. Uh, for the folks at home, this is Dan Meeker, the owner of Firebird Targets, and uh, Dan has just finished showing us the facility here, which I apologize you guys cannot see right now, but for good reason. Uh, there's some proprietary stuff going on behind the scenes, right? Absolutely. Yeah, so, you know, the, not only are the, uh, the stuff inside of the targets proprietary and patented, but there's also some other patents uh, as well, correct? Patents and on procedure and formulas, definitely. Got it, cool. Well, uh, and, and that's awesome, means you know nobody's gonna come and knock you off, right? <laughs> right. Uh, which you've spent a lot of time on this, and that's really what I wanna talk about and, and get these folks familiar with. So uh, when did Firebird targets start? Firebird actually uh, started in Great Britain in 2010, and uh, I found out about it about the same time that it started and got very interested in it. Sure. Um, with my previous background of uh, regulatory involvement, I felt comfortable that uh, it could be uh, brought to the United States and, and we could get it permitted here. Interesting. Okay. So what really, so you, it's a UK product originally, what caught your eye about it? Um, we had a system called the NAT uh, system. It's a, um, a remote control um, uh, drone okay. and it had exploding targets underneath that didn't work very well. So uh, I had a little bit of experience with this type of concept. but. When I found out that the inventor had uh, improved that system, it, it became evident to me that there was an alternative to binary explosives that could be safer and a lot easier to use. Gotcha, and you just mentioned binary explosives. So uh, for the folks at home, if you've ever messed with, uh, I, I've seen it in stores in the past, I don't know about it anymore, but I've yeah. seen them before where you have like two parts and you mix them up and then you put them out and you shoot them and hopefully they go bang, right? Correct, hopefully they go bang. They're uh, high explosives okay. and uh, they exist by a loophole uh, with the ATF. Okay. Um, the problem is they are high explosives, whereas this is um, py pyrotechnic. It's not as powerful, yet it still gives a great explosion, yeah, a great sound, and flash, and smoke. Which is awesome. It's, it's basically an indicator, right? You hit your target. It's, an, it's a positive uh, shot indicator. We call it an instant hit recognition target. I like that. I like that a lot. Mm -hmm. So. You've got a couple different variants of the target here, and obviously we're here to, to talk mostly about the M50, but run the folks through the 65, the normal 50s, and, and I know you have an IR target, which we've played with before as well. Right, actually, I'm gonna back up on you. Okay, the, sure. the, the 50 yeah. was the first one that we came out with uh, for the United States, uh, and then we moved up to the 65 because uh, the American public likes a bigger bang. Yeah, sure. Um, we actually worked very hard on getting the loudest we could, which is in excess of 140 decibels wow. at 50 feet. Um, from a lot of the pyramid clients, we learned that that was actually too loud for their sound sensitive environments. Sure. So I tuned it down a little bit and now we've got the M50, which stands for moderated yep. 50, similar to the moderator that you put on your gun. Right, got it. So sound dampened, if you will. Correct. Awesome. So. That's really the whole point behind these M50s is that you're not going to get the massive bang and uh, explosive sound that you get out of the 65 or the regular 50s. Uh, and for the folks at home, the, just shooting them while we've been here so far, 
The big difference for me is you get a much bigger like smoke effect out of this target, Correct. which I really like. It kind of hangs in the air. It, it really it lets you know that you hit the target. And even if you're doing that farther away, I think it's got a lot of potential there as like an indicator for 100 yard shooting, things like that, that you can do, you know, in a, uh, what'd you call it? A sound sensitive? Sound sensitive environment. Sound sensitive right. environment without uh, without making anybody uh, antsy, you know? So, I, and that's why I think these are awesome. It, it's actually a concept that I didn't, I, I don't know. Did, did you foresee this when you started? Um, not at all. This was um, a, um, a surprise, actually. I thought everybody wanted the loudest uh, target that they could get. But it makes really a lot of sense when you think about if you're in a, in a, a shooting environment like at a, at a gun range and you're in a lane and there's a lane next to you and you shoot with a, uh, an, a moderated 50, you're not uh, disturbing your neighbor. Yeah. So they can enjoy the range as well as you. Yeah, which is awesome. That's what these M50s are all about. Uh, but I figure better than us talking about it, let's go shoot some and uh, show these guys what it actually sounds like and what kind of effect it has once you hit it. I think we can come up with a few for you to shoot today. Awesome, I love it. Let's go hit the range. Dan, uh, that's a pretty monumental difference. I mean, you watch the, the 65 literally knock over the target, the, the 50 rattles it, and the M50 just, it, it's just there, and you get this nice big puff of smoke. I mean, for me, this is awesome. Like, I think about all the possibilities where I'm not disturbing people. This really, really uh, sets a high bar, in my opinion. For Thank you. It was not easy to make an explosion without an explosion. An explosion. <laughs> it's kind of. Yeah, it was hard. <laughs> That's, that's a good point. And you mentioned high explosives uh, and binary before, um, but how is how are Firebird targets set apart from a binary explosive? I would say 180 degrees. Okay. We have really nothing in common with uh, binary explosives other than they both make noise. Uh, gotcha. This minimum safety distance for our product is 50 feet instead of 100 yards. We don't cast off um, uh, small particles at ballistic speeds. Um, our product is biodegradable and it's pyrotechnic, but most of all, it's, uh, it's certified by the ATF. Which is big, I mean, that, that right. means Right, you're not something. gonna get in trouble for, for owning it, transporting it, carrying it, using it. It's uh, perfectly legal to buy on the shelf and use, but you gotta watch out for your local uh, ordinances and what burn bans might be involved, course, sure. things of that nature. Sure, yeah, which is part of the reason we can ship them to your door in right. most places, so that that's awesome as well. Um, so Dan, if somebody wants to learn more about, not just how Firebird targets came to be, but really more information about what sets them apart, uh, do you have more information online? I'm sure you do. We do. Uh, of course, you can go to our website, uh, firebirdtargets.com, or we have a uh, an evolution video, which we produced recently, that shows the uh, a parallel between black powder and how it was uh, affected, how gun shooting was affected by the advent of brass cartridges and the evolution of a, a reactive targets from binary explosives okay. to the current peel and stick uh, method that we present. I gotcha, cool, all right, great. So go check that out first and foremost. Uh, but before we, we go shoot some more, what does it require in terms of to get these to set off, right? To, to actually explode, right? right, right. Um, what, what are we talking about? Because I know we've had good success with metal back targets, right? right? But are there other materials that the folks can use at home or on the range, right? That That's where work? the fun begins. Okay. Um, there's all kinds of backings that you can put on this product. Uh, you can actually attenuate the, the noise level of the both the uh, 50 and the 65. Okay. And, and of course the M50. Uh, the, the softer the backing, say uh, plywood or things like that, sure. uh, the less impact is going to be absorbed by our, our product. Okay. 
And so it's a, it reacts directly to the, the force that is, is delivered to it. it. So the harder it's hit, the louder it is. Now, also, uh, say for a long distance shot, you had a high velocity round sure. that would normally splatter on steel. I would recommend putting it on plywood so that it penetrates the plywood instead of splattering and accidentally setting off the firebird and giving you a false positive. Oh, that's interesting. I yeah. hadn't really considered that. that that's yeah. a very good point. Thank you for that. And, and with we get a lot of questions, obviously being uh, you know predominantly an air gun company, right. about what is the minimum velocity requirement to set yeah. one of these things off. And and I know you can do them with uh, at, at probably closer distances with a lot less. But what what's the recommendation? Don't get any closer than 50 feet. Yeah. Um, About 18 yards for the folks at home. Right, but um, you know, back to the the splatter uh, with today's air guns, you still have that sure. that pot potential. Some big chunks of lead. Yeah. Right, but our 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 uh, testing has shown that a 22 caliber pellet gun traveling 850 feet per second or better will detonate any of these targets. Okay. Anything less than that, we don't recommend because you'll get mixed results. Uh, and probably wouldn't enjoy your, your fun. Got it. So if you are, I can tell you from experience, we've, we've shot them with slower than that 850 mark. And as long as you're using a metal back target and you're not going super far, they definitely go off. But I totally yeah. get what you're saying. That, yeah. That's really a function of, of the weight of, of your projectile. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of the bigger calibers obviously aren't Slow. necessarily traveling that right. fast, but you have a lot more mass hitting that target, right? So you guys all know about that. So yeah. awesome. Well, Dan, thank you so much. It's been a, a great time checking this out. Um, I can't wait to get these M50s in hand. Uh, we're going to use them all the time well, at the shop. It is a so. pleasure having Pyramid here at the Firebird factory, and uh, we hope you come back. Absolutely. But until next time, what do you say we blow up some more stuff? Let's blow it up. Awesome. Nicely done. <laughs> Good <Awesome>. smoke. <laughs>